Okay, this bass fishing trip has turned into a white bass trip. I've personally caught about 10 today, just drinking a drink bait all day. And uh, hybrid kills on a swim bait. He's killing it, and his wife is also killing it. So we've probably got about 30 sand bass right now. And uh, we'll see. I mean, we'll, we'll definitely cook something now. <laughs> all right. Since we got some uh, white bass, time to transfer them over. Oh man. I mean, they, they like dead already, but. Oh, he's still wiggling. He's still wiggling. Oh yeah, what you know about that? Dinner time, dinner time. Alright, man, I just wanted to get an honorable mention. Look at this guy. Woo, he's like my biggest white bass ever. Like <laughs> 16 three quarter inches. Mondo, Mondo. Mondo white bass. Like most people would call it. Video 8 VHS size fish. Hey guys, it's Connery from Out of Work Outdoor again. Today we're going to do the Fishing Explained 2021 for the month of April. We're focusing on white bass. So we've been waiting all year for this month. This month I can honestly say the white bass run is either on the tailing end on, in the state of Texas or it's in the pre-spawn stages in the, month, in the world of Minnesota. Okay, So this is going to apply. So depending on where you're at, I'm in Oklahoma, and right now I, I'm checking my local likes. The spawn is about two weeks away, so this video will come in handy for everybody. So, White Bass Spawn 2021, Fishing Explained. We're going to cover baits, where to find them, and when to catch them. Okay, so in terms of baits, and I talk about this a lot. A lot of these are the repeats of last month's. So, once again, we got the umbrella rig. For the guys that are feeling, you know, adventurous, you want to do something different, you maybe you're a veteran of the sport now, you want to do something different, you know, so you're, you're, you've been catching them on these uh, grubs and uh, curly tails for the past 10 years, you want to do something different, pick yourself up a umbrella rig and try to catch yourself five at the same time. So that's pretty cool, okay? Oh, yeah, by the way... These are all my all-time favorite, uh, all-time favorite. I've been fishing these little swim bait things for, I don't know, 20 years now. But it's from a company called Head Hunter Lures. It's basically a little fish profile, and that's exactly how I rig it too. A little curly tail on there. I think the color is called uh, Fireworks or something like that. But all-time favorite color all time favorite color okay and right now we're going to start dissecting more and more and more into the baits because there's going to be a lot of pressure in these areas that you're going to go into so a lot of people throw the same type of baits so i'm going to give you a couple of extra examples of good things you're going to throw so lipless crankbait lipless crankbaits we're just going to start with this one this is the all-time favorite in the world of lipless crankbaits for us. Uh, my dad has caught hundreds on this. This is the Strike King Red Eye Shad, the quarter ounce version with upgraded hooks. If you haven't noticed, uh, they are rocking the Mustad hooks on this one. And if White Bass touches it, it's coming in the boat. Easy chuck and wine bait. And of course, how can you go talk about lipless crankbaits without talking about this guy? We mentioned this guy last month. We've already shown three videos of this guy doing crazy damage on white bass and hybrids. And if you see all this pink stuff in my hands, that's because of poison ivy. So, yeah, poison ivy's already out, and that's how you know the white bass is going to be running. And, oh yeah, gay blade. Cotton Cordell gay blade. Okay? 
And, and this is one that a lot of, not a lot of people talk about, but I'll let you guys know. It's been a little while since I pulled this guy out of the tackle box. And he's a little rusty, but this is those crankbaits that are real small. This is the Strike King KVD 1.0, okay? A little harder to find than the 1.5, but this little guy, he does really good too. So when they're not buying anything else, throw that in there. It's just something a little bit, a little bit different, you know? Um, and on top of that, on top of all of that, how can I forget these guys? These guys right here. These guys, the rooster tails, there you go, here's a whole mess of them right here. I mean, it seems like color doesn't matter at times, but sometimes it does. But if it does, you know, typically my favorite colors is just some type of a white, some type of a black, and even the rainbow colors. And at least in Oklahoma, the water's dirty, they want the chartreuse. We got the pinks here, just to try something different, okay? so. Take your pick. Can't go wrong with a rooster tail. That's why I got like you know, 10 of them in my hands right now. But yeah, rooster tails. All different sizes too. There's the rooster tails and then there's the vibrating rooster tails too. So I don't have any of those right here, but pick up those vibrating rooster tails. Those are pretty sick. And you know, don't forget about them. Good old crappy, good old fashioned marabou crappy jigs. This is actually one of the best colors here in Oklahoma. So if you've never tried this, go get it. Okay. And on top of that, we're going to introduce... This is the reason why we've been waiting all year. Because before this month, we never talked about top water. Well, guess what, boys? Top water season's in. We got the favorite... The favorites from the house. We got the... Rebel Popper with upgraded hooks. Custom paint job, of course, by yours truly. Okay, so it's custom, but really it's just nail polish, okay? So you get some type of rainbow nail polish, put it on that side. Uh, you got a chartreuse dip, dip the tail, and then paint the belly orange. That's it. Don't waste your $20 of custom painted lure. Um, just use your wife's nail polish, girlfriend's nail polish, be fine. And here's the other one. This is what a lot of people don't talk about. This is the Hedden Torpedo. All it is, you throw it out there, you don't walk the dog with it, you just strip it. And it just, a little, uh, a little prop on it and just spins. It's like a top water spy bait, that's all it is. Of course, upgraded hooks and everything on these, because these are actually lures that we use for bass fishing tournaments, but they cross over to the white bass as well, but... These are awesome. On top of that, if you want to do something really, really, really cool, okay, really cool, this is something, is an adaptation of the bobber fishing tricks. You know, when you were a little kid, you go out and you throw bobbers and you put uh, worms and you put crappy jiggles on the bottom. Well, check this out. Take your favorite top water lure, okay? Tie from the end of that ring in the back. Give it, you know, two feet, and then put a crappy jig on the back. Okay, so what that does is a lot of times this little popper will attract the, the attention of the fish. Whether it's popping on the surface, it's giving a lot of commotion, or it's got a little bit of flash on here, it'll attract the commotion. But a lot of times the fish won't come to the surface to bite this. But if this guy is trailing, you know, this little crappy jig, if this little crappy jig is trailing, you know, like say two feet behind, a lot of times you'll get bit on this, and they'll never touch this. So this is the best out of both worlds. It's called the Oklahoma Killer Rig. It's actually This is actually coined by one of our good uh, original members of the 24-7 Outdoor Addiction crew. Uh, his name is V-Man, and he coined this term. I gave him 100% of the credit. But basically, you have a topwater lure and a crappy jig in the back. It's something that's common in the world in uh, Oklahoma fishing. But for the you guys out of state, if this is a legal means of taking fish, try it. It works great in three foot or less. It'll make your day, trust me. You catch two at a time also, so that's great. All right, let's talk about the wear. So last month I told you they're gonna be in the transition phases, right? So they're heading up to the spawning grounds. You're looking for running water and everything like that, right? So if you haven't watched that video, go back and check it out. 
But on this one, where we're going to change your approach 180. So this is what you want to do. Fish, the first wave should already be at the back of the pockets. So they should already be spawning. Okay, they should already be there. So what you want to do is instead of starting and following, you should go the other way and try to intercept these fish. So what you're going to do is you can go up as far as you can to the creek. Start fishing as far as you can up the creek or until you hit a dam of some kind. You can't go any farther. Start fishing there and come back towards the main lake okay so that's what you want to do because regardless there's a good chance you're going to get to the main like, you're get to the back of the pocket or the creeks and there they are there's thousands of them already but there if they're, if they're not there you can always move back a little bit you know as you're fishing throwing all these lures as you're fishing but you kind of want to search lures. so the lipless crankbait the crankbait it's a good lure the rooster tail is a good lure to just kind of keep yourself occupied to catch one. When you catch one, then you want to kind of hunker down and throw the rest of them just to make sure you clean the spot out before you move on. But once again, look for running water. Running water is always key because the way the fish spawn is they go and they spawn and they let the current take the eggs. Okay, the eggs don't actually kind of, they don't make a bed and they, 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 they don't put the eggs in the bed. They, they actually just spawn. They want the water just to take the eggs. And a couple days later, the eggs hatch. Typically, that's how it works. So, you want dams because it dams release water at this time of year. Uh, and a lot of rains will come over the dam, and the fish can't travel past the dam a lot of times. So, they're trapped. So, dams are good, running water, creeks are good, or some type of a big flat at the back of the, the pockets can be good. Um, that's how we've been catching them the last couple of days. There hasn't been a lot of rain, so it seems like they're still staging there before they head up the river. So that's how we're catching them. But regardless, everything's in one to three foot of water. Everything is in one to three foot of water. Keep that in mind. One to three foot of water, and you should be able to find them. Okay? A lot of times when you get there, you actually see them spawning. So just pay real good, good attention to the water. I know a lot of our waters were murky. A good set of sunglasses is key. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I got raccoon eyes. I've been I've been fishing like three days straight. So good pair of polarized. You could actually see the fish spawning. Okay, that's pretty cool too. If you've never seen it before. Keep an eye out for that. Okay. And when and where? Once you find them, they'll bite all day. They will bite all day. Once you're in that spawning area. Well, once, let me put it this way. Once they are spawning, they don't bite. They don't bite as well, but they'll still bite. But once you find them, you can still get them to bite. They'll bite all day. All day. So the thing is, you make repetitive casts to a certain area. If you know they're there, and they'll bite. Eventually, they'll bite. Okay? So that's the when, where, and how. I hope you guys learned a lot of things today. And like I said, umbrella rigs. The, 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 this just opens up the world of lures because we were stuck at three i wanted to keep it to three three of the top threes but i do understand this is the time of year where a lot of people will start go fit going in they'll, they'll go fishing and you want to pack a little bit more because if everybody's throwing a lip list the fish will get conditioned to it they won't want to bite it no more that's when you want to switch to like a rooster tail if everybody's throwing a rooster tail or a crappy jig then you want to change it up again um and keep in mind, all these baits are chucking wine baits, right? So they're they're moving real fast. There's gonna be some days where the the bass don't they don't want to chase, so they want something that's just gonna hover in their face for a while. That's when the OKR really, really, really dominates. So the OKR is basically like I said, it's like a bobber and crappy jig technique all over, but just an advanced form of it. So when you cast out, you're just working it real, real slow, just popping it on its way, right? You're just popping it every six inches or so. And it just hangs there. The crappie jig hangs there in their face. So they have no choice but to come eat the crappie jig. At least that. So you're going to. That's something new that the fish hadn't seen. And most of these. Uh, most of you guys that are watching this. Let me know if you've even heard of that rig before. Because I'd like to know. I'd just like to know. And of course the umbrella rig is something that. Most people will not throw. So if you're throwing that. There's a good. It's a high risk high rewards kind of thing. You might get uh, snagged. And you might lose 20 bucks. But. We, we actually sell the umbrella rig, so if you want that, let us know. Um, and that's about it. That's the white bass. So, once again, once you find them, there's going to be a lot. There's going to be at least 20 in the area. Okay, so at least. I would even venture to say a normal group is 100. Okay, a good group, two to 300. 
All right. So it is not out of the question to fill up a white cooler, one of those big, I'm talking big coolers, not out of the question to do that. 200 fish days are not out of the question. But I just want to say, you just take as much as you want. Actually, not as much as you want, as much as you can eat. So if you're feeding your family of four, take a lot. If you're feeding yourself, take it, you know, just 10 or 20. That's plenty. Lay them up. And uh, check your local laws and regulations, too. There are some lakes that have no limit. There are some lakes that have a 20 per person limit. So keep that in mind. White bass fishing, it's always fine. White bass was introduced to feed people, okay? At least in my state, that's what it is. So white bass fishing. It's been explained. I hope you guys learned something. Uh, leave a comment below if I missed anything or if you like to see something else for the next month. Alright guys, Connery from Out of Work. See you on the next one.